Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islamic Life with me, Reza Ghazim. This program is going to look at an issue that puts under the spotlight the extent or otherwise of the inclusivity of the Muslim culture in accepting people who choose to become Muslims later on in their lives rather than being born into a Muslim family. Converts to Islam in the UK often feel isolated and dislocated and feel the sense of being a minority within a minority. They live in a liminal space, cut off from their families and friends, and only tenuously integrated within heritage Muslim communities, according to a landmark report produced by Cambridge's Centre of Islamic Studies in 2016. Some Muslims born into the religion often see converts as better Muslims, as they have come to Islam having researched the religious values thoroughly and adopted the faith by choice. This can either command respect for converts or resentment. Many born Muslims tend to mix their cultures with Islam and can feel intimidated by the more knowledgeable and properly practicing converts. There may even arise issues of trust, given the current political climate against Muslims, and some Muslims tend to doubt the real intention of converts. On the other hand, Converts may themselves fail to get a sense of belonging within the Muslim communities based on disillusionment of many non-Islam practices that are common within the Muslim communities. How can these gaps be reduced? We're honored to be joined by our esteemed guest, Professor Dark Ramadan, to discuss all of these issues. Welcome to the program, Professor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Some of the things have been mentioned in the introduction, but I really want to think about a Muslim is a Muslim is a Muslim. Why are we even concerned in a sense about discussing some of these issues? Should there not be automatically you've come into the family and that that's it? <laughs> yes, in theory this should be the case that uh, as soon as you are a Muslim you are a Muslim and there should be no distinction on any uh, specific level. The problem is that we are human beings and, and we are dealing with as you said, difference of culture. So we might have different cultures within Islam and we are making some difference. Origins, color, skin color is very important within the Muslim community. And then you have the converts. We are very, very good at welcoming them the first day. Now, the way we treat them the following days, this is not as easy as to say we are all Muslim. There is, as it was said in the clip, you know, lots of uh, uh, questions and doubts and uh, misunderstandings, and we have to tackle this issue. It's a serious one. There is also this issue around the language used to describe people who have accepted Islam later on in their lives. The the the, lang the words convert or revert. What's the issue, or what's the um, problem around those languages? Yeah, yes, uh, uh, it's an interesting question because uh, uh, as we know in Islam, uh, the natural state of a human being is to be a Muslim based on the fitra, the natural aspiration towards God. You are a Muslim by nature and you become uh, a Muslim by conscience and by choice. Uh, so some people are saying, in fact, by becoming a Muslim, I'm coming back to the origin. So I'm reverting to the, or, the origin. And in a way, when you understand Islam from within, your natural state was, in fact, through your very nature and the natural order, is Islamic. So that's right. The problem is that some are saying this is the only right way of speaking and, and they are refusing conversion. And conversion has also to do with something which is important even in uh, the prophetic uh, experience. When, for example, he came to uh, the cave and, and, and uh, uh, Gabriel, peace be upon him, came to him and he revealed, revealed to him the very presence of God. And the supplication that we have coming from the Prophet is, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, O you who are 
changing, converting the hearts, meaning that when he accepted Islam, something changed in his life. The way he was looking at the world, the way he was looking at himself, the way he was understanding. So there is something which is a conversion when it comes to uh, your understanding of the self and the universe. So I myself, I'm using both. I'm saying, yes, you are coming back to your nature, but there is something which is changing that you need to consider because when you say God, when you say Allah, when you say there is a creator and to him we belong and to him we shall return, you are saying something that it's essential that your life has a meaning. So there is a conversion. So this conversion is to come back to the origin, but uh, uh, this is where we can discuss the two uh, notions but it's not mutually exclusive. You can use both when you understand what is happening as to your nature, what is happening as you, uh, to your change. Mm. There was also something that was said in the introduction about um, the quality of Muslim, if you like, that you are, and the idea that uh, people who are reverts or converts um, are better Muslims uh, than the people who are just born into the family because they've made a choice and they have had to reject many things that they were used to, perhaps many comforts. And so there is that notion. What would you say to that idea? I, I think that we have to be very, very cautious with such judgments. We don't know. You can be a convert uh, to Islam. You come to Islam, you, you are called, and sometimes it's not even your choice. It's coming from God. So you are coming to Islam, and, and the secret of uh, Iman, it's coming to you. And with this, you are going to improve your behavior, to change your life, and you could be a good Muslim. Now you have people who were born in Muslim families and they, even if it was not a choice at the beginning, at one point in their life, they are decided to be good Muslims. So, so you can be uh, born Muslim and be a very good Muslim and you can convert to Islam and at one point you are not behaving the right way. So this judgment on the way you became a Muslim or you are a better Muslim because you came out of your own decision I think that this is a very superficial thing. The best Muslim in the sight of God uh, is the one who is the best in his khuluq, which is his character, his behavior, or her behavior. And I think that this is it. We really need to be clear on this, that some think that because they were born Muslims, they are by nature better Muslims. So the convert should do more to be a good Muslim. So you have, it's, the, it's, it's a two-way uh, uh, process. On the other side, some things that uh, 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 because you become a Muslim, you are better. And we see this in the communities in the West, for example, that when some people are converting to Islam, it's as if, you know, uh, and if they are famous, they can even be muftis and, 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 and references. That's very, very, very dangerous. And, and it's not because... Celebrity you, scholars Exactly, almost. exactly. So, so that's, that's not going to work. I think that we have to be very, very cautious. The best has the best behavior. And humility is everywhere. You can be a convert. You can be a Muslim by, 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 through your family. And that, that, that's not the way you assess uh, who is the good Muslim. Now, within that context, the idea that uh, you're going to actually um, make those decisions, how do you get people to move away from, from that? Um, because there's also a kind of um, a two-way, kind of almost a uh, discussion, argument, infighting going on that, oh, we've chosen to be that, or, and the other the person, well, you, you're just new to the whole thing. Hmm. And that culture that sometimes can come up. How do you counter uh, that kind of narrative from developing? I, I think that we are uh, at a point within our Muslim communities in the West, for example, and we are facing this as we were talking about Britain, for example, but also in Muslim majority countries where we have to tackle the issue uh, at many levels or different levels. First, there is something which is important. When you say you are a Muslim, and, uh, and that's it. No one has the right to judge you because of your color and your origin. We have to say it and repeat this because there is a great deal of racism uh, uh, among Muslims. 
Islam is against racism, but Muslims are often racist in the way you can see in some community. Just go to the United States and look at some, the, some of the statements that we have from Muslims who came to the country or are converted to Islam and speaking about black people in a way which is unacceptable. So this is something which is very important as well. And many black American uh, or African American Muslims coming to Islam have the impression or the feeling that they are considered as second class Muslims. Why? Because they are black and because they are converts. So it's two uh, liabilities together that it's weaknesses that are considered as. Uh, so, so we have to come with this first statement. The second has to do with education. We have to educate Muslims and, uh, and to make it clear that when you enter uh, Islam, you should get it uh, right that you are an equal Muslim and you have the same duties and the same rights within the community. Lots of important issues. We do like to keep this show as interactive as possible and really value your opinion. Here is what you sent us this week. This week we asked... What are the challenges facing converts to Islam in the West? Alta from Norway said, I think the biggest challenge is loneliness, as converts suddenly are neither proper Westerners, nor do they feel a sense of belonging to Muslim communities, majority of whom have come from another culture. Maryam from the UK said, Hijab is a real challenge, especially for women converts. Although within themselves, most of the converts have finally identified themselves and their path. Outwards, they don't belong anywhere. And Chris from Wales said, Converts are seen with suspicious eyes, both by the Western public as well as Muslims born into the faith. They are often suspected of being spies, which makes life very hard. I live life and follow the rule of Allah and Quran. And this is something that I know, so, I know a lot of people who converted to Islam and they've been happier, they become honest. And uh, they do the right thing. We all here to spread the word of Deen. If we know, if you don't want to interact with people from different ethnicities, then what's the point of being a Muslim? You, a Muslim doesn't justify you being an Asian, being African, being a white. Yeah, you're here. If you're a Muslim, it doesn't matter what race you are, what skin color you are. You're a Muslim. A Muslim is a Muslim. If they get uh, more uh, relation, you got me more friendly relation with others, then. I mean, I seen people, they got married, uh, I mean, uh, English married with uh, 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 maybe Somalian or uh, uh, English lady married with Somalian chap or uh, Asian Pakistani, you got me. So there are, but uh, yes, there are difficulties also. My family basically said, come home, but don't be Muslim. So I decided just to stay here. The most important fact time today is extremism. You know, for a moment to wear hijab is extreme in their point of view. I wish I had the the strength to go to a mosque and just go in and ask questions and be like, I need help, please. Like, I just need a, a sister to talk to about it. But I don't know where to go from here. In uh, Harrow Central Mosque, we have a... Uh, system in place whereby new converts they are educated and they're given the Islamic uh, knowledge um, as far as they want to go and uh, I think that is the right way to go about it otherwise to leave a new convert to find his own way I don't think it would be the right thing to do. That's all the comments we have for this week. If you'd like to have your views featured in the show be sure to follow us on Facebook or join us on Twitter. Now you can send your own videos with your comments and even your questions to islamandlife at presstv.com. One of the things that was being said in the clip was this idea that uh, they're being looked at suspiciously. How's that happened? Why has that happened? Has that always happened this way? Because the history initially was that lots of people came and were welcomed and you carried on. No, I, I think it's a, a phenomenon that has to do also with the, the atmosphere. When we had all this discussion about security, about spies within the community, we knew 
a long time ago that some of the people were spying on Muslims within the community. Now it's completely different with all this uh, security and all these policies that we have in the West. You don't know who is who. And, and, and in Muslim majority countries, of course, even, you know, when you were to, to go and, and to pray in the morning, you had, you know, uh, uh, you were monitored by the governments in many countries, for example, Egypt, Tunisia, this is known. Now it's in the West is something which is, uh, uh, which is happening, by the way. It's not, and by the way, I don't think that uh, the, the, the intelligence needs uh, 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 converts to do this. We have lots of Muslims who are working, and, and, and that's very dangerous at the same time. And this is why we have to go beyond this, and we have to go beyond this suspicion. Uh, and, 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 and trust the people. So if somebody is telling you, uh, you know, I'm a Muslim, you, you can't just, oh, you are a convert. So you add now the fact that you are not uh, from my culture, that uh, you are not born a Muslim, and now you could work for uh, intelligence or, or whatever organization. I think that this is, once again, something which we need to be at peace with it. It's a community where we are welcoming the converts, we are welcoming the rivers, we are welcoming the people, and, and on an equal footing, based on an education telling us that a Muslim is a Muslim, man and woman, and then we have to uh, look at him or her in a way where we should always have something which is known in Islam, which is Hosn al-Dhan, which is the positive attitude towards the people, and this, I think, it's important. Now, there is another point which is important, and you said it in your introduction, is this confusion that we have between religious principles and the cultural environment. And we have to talk about this, because very often we are trying to Arabize or Pakistanize or uh, Iranize the, the, the people who are coming into Islam. Why we should understand that when we live in the UK, for example, is the other way around. We need to get from them the positive side of their culture, the British culture, and make it our culture, because at the end of the day we are British, we are German, we are French, we are whatever, we are European, or you, we are American. So no one can say that everything in the Arab cultures is Islamic per se. Of course, many things are not. So we have to be selective in the, with the Arab culture, even though the Quran is coming uh, and is revealed in the Arabic language, it's not the Arabic cultures that we have to take as they are. And the same, we cannot just reject the Western cultures because they are not Islamic. No, many things are Islamic within the Western culture. Now, within that context, the, the idea that you talked about in terms of the relationship that should be there, you know, the first day they're welcomed, and you said that in the, in the f response to the first question, mm. but the following day, mm. you know, the things aren't as rosy. Exactly. What mm. happens, and then what should happen the following day and the following days? Yes, I, I think that uh, uh, we are happy and sometimes we are doing things that you are, we want to, you know, uh, show that, you know, people are coming to Islam. And then within, there is a sense that it's exactly what was said in the clip. A sense of, am I belonging to this community? How am I treated within these communities? I think there is a neglectfulness in the way we are dealing. There is a lack of... Uh, 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 brotherhood, sisterhood. So y the ongoing process of in the al mu'minun ikhwa, believers are brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity. So, so this is where this humanity, this uh, not judging the people on the, the fact that they just uh, uh, came and that we have to uh, teach them. No, we have to treat them on equal footing. So it's based on this brotherhood and the sisterhood. It's based on an ongoing process of, of welcoming them within this community uh, by being active, by being to give them uh, to give them a space within our mosques, within our organizations. And, and to take advantage of their qualities and the input that they can bring, as I was saying, about their culture, for example, which is not what we, we, uh, we, we are doing. So as I said, the feeling that uh, I don't really belong to this, we are confusing culture and religion, so we are trying to, or asking them to be more like us, 
So I remember one uh, 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 convert to, to Islam said, you know what, I came to the first appointment and I was just a new Muslim and I went on time, I, I went there on time, I wanted to, this was a meeting. And they came one hour late and the second meeting it was the same. I came with my culture, we start on time. They imposed onto me their culture, we start late. Who was right? He was right by saying, you know, we have to start on time. So sometimes we have to take from the surrounding culture. And they made him feel that he was too much, you know, a European and not even uh, enough a Muslim. No, he was a good Muslim. And adding to our Islamic principles the fact that uh, we have to start on time. This is a very important point that sometimes we make the people feel that their culture or European or American or their culture is a problem, while it's our culture, very often, which is the problem in the way we deal with our principles. And in terms of tackling, sometimes these structural prejudices, and you commented on one in regards to the timing and so on, how do you make sure that that is going to be done? How do you make the masjid or the community of Muslims more inclusive? How, do you, how can they welcome someone um, in, in a better way than, than is perhaps being done? Exactly as we were talking about the fact that within the mosques, for example, and within our organizations, uh, we need to deal with our activities and our structure and the way we structure our organizations based on the Islamic principles, not based on our cultural belonging. You have to do masks for Pakistani, for Moroccan, for Turkish, for, and what's that? And, and, and now we start in, in my country, in Switzerland, to have masks for converts because they don't feel good in other masks. It's as if it's too cultural. So we need to come to something which is what are the Islamic principles on which we are relying when it comes to a mosque, when it comes to an organization, and to welcome the people and to deal with them based on their qualities, based on their capacities. But this, this idea of Pakistani mosque, Moroccan mosque, you know, and so on and so yeah. forth, con mo uh, convert mosque, whatever, this is completely... Um, different from the way that it all started, surely. This, this is not what it was about, was it? No, it was not, and this is the problem. We are importing in the West our cultural origin, and we feel good with our brothers and sisters, not in Islam, but in our culture, our cultural origin. So we have to change this. So it's fine. The first generation is fine, because we are coming from someone. We speak the same language. The second might be in between. But now we are uh, reaching the third and the fourth. We have to get rid of this type of you know, belonging to a culture more than belonging to a religion and making our brothers and sisters who are converting to Islam uh, feeling that no, I'm not part of this process. I'm not heard in this community. And I think that we need to come with a space for them to be active and to be heard. What are the challenges that uh, reverts or converts face in the West? So exactly what was said is that they are coming from a culture and they feel that they are no longer Western, uh, and so they are alienated, and then they are alienated within the community. So, so this is where, instead of making them feel bad in both universes of reference, we need to make them a bridge between the two, take from the culture and take from Islam. And this is where uh, credibility, being able to speak out, being uh, heard when it comes to our daily life as Muslims, this is what we need to do for men and for women. And to be clear, Islam is not a culture. Islam is a religion welcoming all the cultures, and among them, the Western culture is part also of our strength as a universal community. Lots of interesting points being made. While religiosity functions in a culture and shapes a culture, it is the culture that then becomes a more powerful force than the religious ideology that developed it. This culture can then become a hindrance to the very principles of the Islamic identity, thereby rejecting the needs of the newcomers to Islam. Being vigilant to this injustice that can be ingrained into our religious centres structurally is a necessity, especially in a world where sectarianism is rife. That's all the time we have for today. I would like to thank Professor Ramadan for joining us, and I thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.